Mo's from Dean, and then no time for Mathis, and this week we'll have some time. Also, Sotiris um, submitted a new topic talking about JS and CSS files. Um, and and I want to look at the new issues we created last week that are worth talking about, talking about shipping 1.0. Um, status. Status is that thing here. Alias draft. That's an old one. But usually we start with option one, right? Okay, so maybe I didn't update that last week. Using markdig, we talked about it. Um, so, so, so last week we merged this PR correct archive when date changed. Apparently an issue if you change a blog post to a very specific date, the archives will not be computed correctly. Uh, this is some hard piece of code. All these changes on the, well, all the logic to compute the um, archives is not easy because draft and non-draft and so that's not easy and we have a table calculating all the archive every time a blog well anytime we have a blog post changes and I think related to that we find an issue on Orchard Core um, something related to one of my notes I put in the meeting notes. I created it with the others on Thursday during the triage. Archive module. An ID that, let me zoom plus for you. So similar to what we have in Orchard 1. So in Orchard 1 we have the archive module, okay? But the archive module is mostly for blogs um, and also based on indices. Yes, equal and maybe listen to meaning. Um, yes, equal indices and Lucin indices we have. So define an index that will be built for all the content items, not just blog posts. Published and latest in case users want to create drafts by date, containing the date aggregate values like day, month, year, week for created date UTC. So if you have done some business intelligence, uh, in your career, you know that you can usually, it's very useful to aggregate data. One second, that's the part I don't like. So to aggregate data in tables and also define um, time dimensions or date dimensions, uh, which means store all these little pieces of uh, data based on the date, so you can query and group things uh, very easily. And an archive module could just do that, not count maybe, yeah, it could go to this point, but I don't think we should do that, a reduce index. But, uh, so do, um, we could have a reduce index also. So project all the content items and index these properties in a custom table and just for the created date UTC because this is the one that is usually that has to be used to um, to display things um, on the front end and this way you can say okay now let's group all the blog posts or whatever you want because it's just indexed on any content item so you can join it to, to the content item index table so filter anyhow you want with the content types or any other properties fields and whatever and then say give me everything group by month for instance or month and year okay and then you have you can access the count and you can build uh, a view an archive view very easily with that and then on another query you can say give me all the blog posts for this month of the year and this way you will have exactly the blog posts and then you could build a page displaying an historical view of 
blog post for a specific month of a specific year or do that for the day or maybe also do that per hour because we will also store the hour and um, and minutes maybe seconds also at different columns that would be super useful um, so the archive module compared to the Orchard one one will not have to compute all the time every um, every count or I'll create at least in database the, the actual value in the in account but it will just be an index of all these properties to make queries super easy to do an archive module and the archive module could also have a, a front-end view that will display I don't know whatever content type in a calendar or it could be used for that who knows but at least yeah so example and then with that yeah that's what I was saying um, yeah, I don't nothing to do with that you can already do that today um, so um, that's it related to that issue correct archive when they changed these kind of issues will not happen then because it will not be computed by the system but by your own query uh, fixing managed pagination blog post archive we saw that last week um, now all should go Call. This was two weeks ago, so last week was and I will filter on dev branch. So the 14 six auto route trading slash okay routing issue. Then add more resource resources documentation from Dean um, because people were confused. So Dean fixed the documentation examples set URL set CDN okay the resources module okay upgrade to SPNet 311 so an update on SP.net and I think Antoine had a question I didn't answer so let's answer it now so this is first so this change on the Travis YAML is downloading it's installing using the donate install script the version 3111 okay and this actually so this is on Travis because Travis apparently doesn't have the 311 on abbeo.yaml I think the question was do we need to update the comments here um, no we don't need to but the comments they are just there in case the um, the image that Abior is using doesn't have the donut version that we are looking for in that case you didn't change well you I don't know if you checked what version is on the image but to do that we go on a pull request well sorry we go on the build because it's outputted as log we do it we do it explicitly um, so if I go on a build here on dev branch you see here dotnet dash so this is the first thing we do display the version of the dotnet SDK that is installed on the base image of Abeo and this is 31101 so this is a correct one maybe at the time the change was done it was not the case and still it was it will not matter because to be able to um, build the things we do we don't need the latest SDK uh, to match the latest SPN version uh, but here is just for later if one day we need yeah we need to uncomment it because the image doesn't have the version we are looking for we'll uncomment it here and then changing this one um, to update all the assemblies to this version well to update all the projects to point to this version because maybe all the NuGet packages don't have this version published. Uh, GraphQL field impact information should be a double, not int. Okay, we'll trust. Call. Fix content script functions. Um, yes, some changes yet. So I assume. For the workflows, 
no, not for the workflow scripting. Oh, I see. If a script method does change on the content item, it needs to apply the changes to the content. Okay. It fixes many issues, I think, also related to workflow. Uh, update Lucene to beta 7. A new version has shipped off Lucene. Lots of changes. Maybe not lots of new features, but lots, lots, lots of changes. And mostly one contributor to the project. Huge work. Fixed name clash issue when using dynamic parts of multiple types. Okay. These are the kind of things I think is risky. This kind of name name rename we can rename parts in GraphQL and that can only provide issues, super scary. So this is one bug fixed due to this feature. Excuse me. Provide new adult short core CMS adult short core overloads to just to map what um, you can do in ASP.NET uh, middlewares and extension methods. So it apparently makes it um, makes it easier to manage. If you want to override custom configuration of your app for MVC for chat core directly from the startup of your web app. So some refactoring from Kevin. Uh, great get draft content items by Elias um, plus index index fixes. So the idea is that before this PR, we will just index the published version of an alias. And if you are following the, um, the decoupled guide, uh, it will tell you how to get um, a preview of a content item using an alias and a custom razor page. But the issue is that it will not work if you are creating a new item and then previewing it because there will be no published version of the content item. So it will not be able to find the content item by its um, alias. So this PR from Dean is now indexing the, the um, alias, but for both the latest and the published version of a content item. The latest version can be the published if there is no draft. Okay, but at least now you can say, I want the latest, whatever it is, draft or not, or I want the published, even if there is a draft. And if you want the latest that is published, then it means you'll get only something that has the draft. So now it's indexed for both. So there will be two records in a table if there is a draft and a different published version. So now the, the guide can, can say, give me the alias that has this value, whatever it's latest or, or or published, you will have a content item. Updating the migrations to create the two columns in the database. Um, and also, is there an index on that? And then index on the alias, but not on the published latest? I think we could have an index on the published latest. Unless this, yeah, maybe, maybe it's not necessary because there is an alias on the Oh, there is also a published latest. Okay. Um, and fixing documentation. Is that documentation? Yeah, it's documentation. Fixing null ref exception. Um, I didn't find it. Someone else found it. I don't remember his name. Um, and and but I had the issue. So I was like, let's fix it. I pushed the, the change. Then this one from Niraj, uh, using, using Gulp build and vendor bootstrap from original theme. The idea is that now when you call the main uh, Gulp um, script, it will also invoke the Gulp scripts from each theme. But um, the actual Gulp um, file that is downloaded with the theme, the start bootstrap themes. And I assume he also updated the, um, the, the assets from the new versions of Start Bootstrap. You see, clean blog and everything. Um, and applied the separation between whatever is that we do and whatever is that is into the themes themselves. 
um, remove Orchard Core OpenID entity from us two modules less because the new version of OpenID supports custom stores, so they can be plugged uh, independently of Orchard modules. Or at least these implementations don't have to be there anymore because maybe there are already implementations with OpenID for these two. Fix widgets, drag and drop. There was a bug in the widgets view. Um, and the other one that will be fixed in the commit after. Update the OpenID SQL store to execute a concurrency check on updates. So Kevin is doing some um, um, optimistic concurrency check using SQL by saying save this application, which is an OpenID application. Check concurrency true. This is a new thing uh, in SQL that will check that nothing has changed this application uh, between it was loaded on this process and saved with these changes. And if there is an issue, it will throw um, an exception on the commit and then it catches the concurrency exception saying something else changed the application while you were saving it, so please try it again. Okay? That's the idea. Uh, optimistic concurrency. That's a new option in SQL. Um, fix issue with layers that can be dragged up to zones, and the idea being that the, the targets for the zone dragging, the dragging zones were to uh, lose, and then you could drag a widget from a layer or a layer to a widget, so now it's fixed by Jasma. A new liquid filter super fast uh, Jean-Philippe comes to me saying, hey, I'd like to be able to pass a custom JSON document to in liquid, like a custom object. And um, before that, we had to create a string separated by commas and then uh, split it. And then you have an array and then do it for each property you want because you wanted to generate tables based on existing values he had. Um, so he made this filter which is a JSON parse filter. So what you do is that you, in this case, is creating a string that is a JSON document. Okay, here it's an array, not a document, an array of objects, and it captures this string into the variable named sum collection. So sum collection is now a string variable that contains that JSON document. And JSON object equals sum collection pipe JSON parse will parse that JSON content and return a JSON object, which is internally a J object. And then in with that you can it's an array, so it can be iterated on and then it accesses the key property and the value property. Apparently there is a bug that prevents doing k dot key and k dot value. I'll have to check that. So in the meantime it's index using the indexes. Okay. So a new filter uh, enabled by default when you do liquid. JSON parse, super useful. Um, reflect changes made in template to doc sample. Okay, so in the template, you made a change, and now it's also in documentation. Fix regression for tag helpers not working. Um, yes, this is a breaking change. Um, there was an issue that um, it, some things were working in development mode and not in release mode because um, it will find the tag helpers because Orchard will dynamically find the references to properties or dynamically build some assemblies. Um, and But in production it will not do that because reference was missing from one module to the contents module. So Dean created a new contents the tag helpers project that contains the tag helpers for contents module, which means the content item tag helper and another one. Um, and now the idea is that whenever we have tag helpers, we'll put them in the tag helpers library so that our themes and other modules who need that can just reference this tag helper library and not the full module. So the changes that had to be uh, done are um, everywhere we are using the Orchard Core Contents assembly to find tag helpers. We need to look into the assembly name tag helpers. It should not break any website if you are using Liquid. 
if you're not using liquid, it's possible that uh, your site is broken after this change, meaning the tag helper won't be found, so you need to change your view imports to contents to tag helpers. Um, but I don't think many people are using uh, Razor on the front end and also tag helper from contents. Uh, okay. So most of the mo internal modules have been changed. So it should not impact you. But there is a risk. Workflow status localization, some properties were not localized correctly. So um, Ludovic made a um, service method helper uh, to get a localization for a status. One second, I need to accept someone. So that's this thing, and you can see here, instead of having this um, switch case here, just there, but it was also missing somewhere else, um, Ludo made a custom method that will do it as part of the code, and this code is called in two different views, this one and this one. Good job. Then fixing typos everywhere. Starter recipes themes docs. Um, yeah, so then creating more documentation about all the recipes that we have in the setup and what they do and why you will use them. Um, Antoine fixing trimboing settings validation. Uh -oh. Okay, that's weird. Looks like a caching issue. And that should be fixed soon because we don't want to look for custom editors in our drivers, but this is what Dean has been working on. Uh, standard display option for each field. Um, I, so why is that, Antoine? Is that because, why is that? Why do we need a standard display for each field? Is it because nothing appears or if we don't have that? If you don't have one and then you yes. add one yourself, like somebody adds one in a custom ah. mod, um, it, the, the one you've added becomes the default. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Makes sense. Um, so now it means that when we create a field, we need to define a display mode, mandatory. Okay, so Antoine updated all the fields with that file. Okay, uh, Razor Pages support for admin. Ah, it has been merged. So this has been merged. So the idea is that you can create admin pages in Razor with Razor Pages, sorry. But I haven't reviewed all the changes. So I'm skeptical about how it works. I don't want it to impact anything we've done before. On the third file, there's hard coded, yeah, path contains admin, but we have that configurable, right? Yes, you see those kind of things. Yeah, but where, where it's hard coded there, what it's referring to is the start of a um, controller name or a nope. um, no, no. path name because it's the view engine, no. just as a view engine. This is the controller name, which is fine. Okay. Well, if action that controller name equals admin, okay. Um, action. This is this is the folder under pages. It would be like pages slash admin. Okay, makes sense then. So it's yeah. fine. So this is the same string here, Henry. It's not about the prefix of the URL, it's the same string. Okay. Okay. And, and, and I'm concerned about the existing components that have to now deal with that. So this is fine. Page convention, okay, fine.
This is better. Okay, so this is another convention. If you have an admin folder and a razor page inside, it will be a razor, admin razor page. Let's trust Niraj and Jean Thierry. Docs markup fixes. Um, okay, looks good. From Andre. Awesome. Um, new. I will talk about that while we're on issues, and then um, give the hand to Mathis for the updates. So I mentioned the archive, and someone merged something in the meantime. Uh, I will um, all made a PR. So I was talking about the archive modules, module, the, pro the proposal, and we also created two other issues that I think are interesting. We So we derailed the triage meeting from Thursday into like design meetings. Sorry. Um, the routable content. <laughs> Oh, we created another one for. So we created this one and the taxonomy one. Where is the taxonomy one? Oh, I just updated one. Yes, I'm updating one. Um, this one. Okay, so I have to. So, routable. The idea with this issue is that we should create a dynamic route part. Something where you can say slash archive. You see the 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 way of thinking when we were talking about archive. We're like, hey, now we need to be able to display a custom page with archives year month, but not like auto route because if we were creating a custom content item with with an auto route, we would use liquid here and there, and for each content item, we will create a custom route so like archives. 2020-01, okay? But we don't want to do that because we don't want to create a new page for each archive for each month. So what we do is we just want to create one content item that can be accessed with whenever the, this pattern is matched, like routing in MVC. So we can't use auto route part. And we even thought about that, can we make it an option in auto route part? And then we realize we can't. So for, for because technically, um, the auto route part registers a dictionary of well-defined where well, it registered one it registers one route and then there is a lookup to find matching routes exact one matches not dfa matches um, so we need a dynamic route part where we will map something like this and that will match a content item whenever this pattern matches and then by extending the dynamic the discontent type with dynamic route and for instance a liquid part we could in liquid access the route data using route data of year and then do whatever we want in in liquid to render something based on the year value that is passed here for instance run a query that will query an index of archived content items by year and then render everything so now the content item will be just like a razor page, but in liquid and from the admin. Okay, so that's, that will be super useful. Um, be able to pass default values in segments like year, uh, um, colon 2020, for instance, if no year is passed or whatever. It's just an example. Could work on auto route part with small changes probably. So it might be able to work on auto route part, but we need to change the routing system of the auto route part or just create a dynamic route part and be done with that. But if we can use the same part, then it's more flexible for us. And so that's, a, I think, a super cool idea. We should look into that. Um, maybe Jean-Thierry will do that in 10 minutes. We don't know. 
he made the auto route part changes for the 3.0, so maybe he's able to do that. Uh, and then when we talked about it, it, we also thought about how do you do that in taxonomy? Can we do that in taxonomy like taxonomy slash the name of the taxonomy slash the name of the term? Okay. And then we realized we could, we could because we can just say, so we looked at all the patterns we could use to display taxonomy. So today, for instance, uh, DoDG is doing taxonomy slash the ID of the taxonomy slash categories. And the razor page uh, you can make with that, if you create a custom route, will just look at the ID of the content of the taxonomy and will not care about the whatever is behind that. It will just be for SEO results. Another way to do that would be taxonomy slash category slash a number. If you think that SEO matters and this is better than this one, up to anyone to do that. But with that, if it's in the middle, you can't do something like category slash science slash biology because if you have terms that are um, in a hierarchy, they have to be at the end of the URL because you can't have a star in your route, meaning many anything including segments in the middle of the pattern. It has to be in the end. So only this pattern with IDs first and then the strings like taxonomy slash and then all the terms will work. So this is something that can be done. And to do that, we just need to define a pattern like this. Okay. Um, and then we realized that to be able to do that, we will need a new aspect that we could call I handler aspect that will be implemented by default by the alias part, but you could do that. And then automatic, the default value, the default implementation will just be ID dash display text. But if you have an alias, it will take whatever you define as the alias to be the segment, like just categories for the taxonomy or science technology for a term, not with the ID. And then it will work automatically. So it will be in the end, this way. So we could create in the taxonomies module a controller action that will map to this pattern where we will use iHandler aspect to build the URL or to look up for the URL and find the um, taxonomy based on the, the alias and then find the term based on the other aliases of each term inside the, the hierarchy of terms. So that's an update. So, and we arise that by thinking about the raw table content and how it could be used to do taxonomies. So we actually don't need to create a raw table content for that. We can just create an out of the box a controller that will support this pattern with the taxonomies modules, or maybe be able to do the same thing from a custom content item, if you want, to change the custom liquid part or to provide a template that will do logic. That's the issues we created during triage and we didn't do any triage, um, but for everyone, sorry. Okay, enough talking. Um, now we will ask uh, Mathis to do a demo of whatever he wants to demo. Okay, thanks. So, so. my recording says we have recorded 48 minutes, but yes. my clock says it's 12, 40. 40, yeah. That's weird. <laughs> okay, so um, account activation. It's really a um, user invite because the problem we have is that the customers of our platform, which maybe I'll show you later if I have time left, they don't want to sign up. We invite them. So currently, um, what we have to do is we go to the users page, we create a user, then it goes back to the, 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 the admins uh, section of the users. We have to find the user that we just created, reset his password, then write an email to the customer saying, hey, this is your user and this is your password. So in order for us to uh, facilitate that process, I created a PR that of I created that implementation in our fork of Orchard Core and we would like to share it back with you. So maybe yeah, you can use it to, to please other other people that are using your platform. So um, hopefully this works. I've set it up uh, for the demo last week. Haven't touched it, but I haven't looked at it either. So let's pray to the demo gods. 
in. So security users. Create a new user. <laughs> so, and right away you can see, okay, is the user enabled and do I want to send him an activation email? So I'll go into the details and how I solved it, but let's use a different, let's use a different address because I might have an account already on that address. So in the background, oh. So you can see it's disabled and in my email folder, I have an email saying, oh, I hope it doesn't open my email. Okay, I have an email saying, hey, please click here the following link to activate your account. Then it will go to the site and then it has to choose a password. And of course, this password is protected by uh, the default settings of your site. Because if I make it too short, it respects the, the password parameters that we set. So if oh. you start Outlook. So when I've chosen my password, oh, why does it go to Google anyway? Uh, you get an email message saying thank you, welcome to the family. So your user account is now activated and I could, I think, log in with it. So that's in a nutshell what it does. Did I not type admin? So how I solved it, um, I created two workflows that sends the emails. So I had to add um, an event uh, for saying, hey, uh, we have a user account request, so that's called account activation. And then it just sends an email with the. Um, in the context, it says, uh, hey, this user wants to activate an account and it has an activation URL. Oh, look, I made the return URL here, Google. And I had a bit of problem with this guy because it gets JavaScript encoded and not uh, HTML encoded, but I solved that in the email task. It's also in the PR. And when your account is activated, I made the account activated event and it sends an email as well. And uh, uh, the password uh, screen that you saw um uh, that's new that those are new screens because we don't have a choose password screen for specifically activating the account so questions remarks yeah. uh, so you say we don't have a screen password uh, password screens don't we have one to change the password? yeah we have we have for, for changing password but yeah it works differently than uh i mean to reset the password yeah, then, yeah, it works so differently. So I did not reuse it. But it works differently because you made a different feature. How now? Let's say that. So you, what you did is add a new checkbox to send mm -hmm. an email on activation. This is a new checkbox, and I assume the event is only triggered if the checkbox is checked. And this yes. is why the workflow. Can you show me the? What's the name of the first event you got? Because I saw the account activated and there is an account yes. activating or something like that. Activation. Okay, activation. So this is when the process starts, the account activation process starts. Yeah. And so, the other is when it's finished. Um, why not use then the account created or the user created or whatever? Don't we have that already? Yeah, we have it. If I had but to do the same feature. It's different. If I had to do the same, contents, yeah. 
I, I will ask you and you will tell me what's different. If I had to do the same feature without any code, you know, any feature, I will just say I'm creating the user disabled like you did. And um, I will create a workflow like you did with the user account created. I will send an email with the URL of the account reset page that we have already. And then the user the will click. Recovery, yeah. yeah, password recovery. And then I will send, I will create another workflow, which is like password recovered or user email validated or something like that, the events we have, and then just enable the user once the password has been changed, something like that. And then that will do the same thing, right? Without any code. I tried it, but I couldn't get it to work, but I can't remember why. That's my only that's, question. That's crucial information, yeah. <laughs> because I, I was wondering how we were doing that before this feature, like even in Yotri one, because we are, we didn't have that in Yotri one and we will support like being able, even from the admin, we can say send the activation email still. So we could even, um, yeah, have a, yeah, so we can do it from the workflow from the UI. Yeah, but now if you do it like this, it's always. So it's each time you create a disabled user, it sends out an email. Maybe you don't want that. Well, so, if, uh, you mean each time we create a user? I see. So, yeah, so now it's uh, uh, it's the admin. But you could check uh, if it's enabled, for instance, if the user is not Yeah, but then it would give another meaning to the word enabled. Then it's, then it's, yeah, it's not, how do you say, it's not obvious that when as an admin you create user accounts that it starts sending emails. It's a, I don't want it. Uh, now, now it's, uh, the reason I did, ah, now I remember, the reason I did it because I want it to be a choice of the administrator to do this. So he could just create a bunch of disabled accounts and it would not email any customer. So it has to be a, a yeah, I don't know how you say that, a, a fully conscious choice to send the activation email for us. And then why not use the, the action, which is send activation email that you have in the main screen? Because, uh, and, uh, so click cancel. For, click for, cancel. For, for, yeah, for us, we have like here like a couple of hundred users. So when I say add user, I say. Uh, so you are trying to say that because you have so many users, you can't do it by hand, but it's good yeah. because you can do it by hand. No, you because you wait. can choose which one. Yeah. Because now, right now, let's say I have a few hundred users, right? Well, if you had a few other users, you will not go through the UI. Because, there... because hundreds will turn into thousands. And then, yeah, but that, then we would probably move exactly to... Exactly, to... a script, so you don't need the, the checkbox. So that's why I'm saying, you are saying you, because you have too many users, you don't want to click on a link, so you may... No, no, well. no, because what I'm saying is, what we have, um, we enter it. The, oh. uh, then we have to look it up. They have to say, send, e, send, you mean click here, right? Mm -hmm. Make an extra button here. That's also possible, but then you would have to search the, then you would have to, too many clicks. I just want add, send, done. It's one screen. For us, it's, yeah, faster. And send activation email actually doesn't send an email, right? No, it's yeah. yeah I, it's I get you. It, it's so yeah. It's it, sick. It's you it's have to have these in place. Event. Yeah. So I would it not even the event. call it send activation email because it's it's wrong. You are just sending raising an event, mm -hmm. and then you, it's up to you to create a workflow that will catch the event. So yes. what what I think is that you really you don't need a checkbox called send activation email. It's a state of the user. I don't know what's the name of the state, but it's just a state. And so you would suggest just make uh, more user states. It's, so today, yes, today we have something called is enabled. 
And that's why I'm just saying maybe it's about something else, or maybe just the, I would just do it with the is enabled, okay? And you say yes, but then every time you create a is enabled, then it won't trigger that. So maybe we need something else that we can have a metadata on, a, on an user, and then it can be any metadata. And so, so today, what? How is the rules? So yeah, and then in the end, if you could add a custom property called checkbox, I want, or this user needs to be activated. Okay. Yeah. So, so prob probably you would like to have like uh, enabled uh, waiting for something like a drop down with more states than just is enabled. Not even drop down, but more checkboxes if you want. Yeah. So, and and not say send activation email, but needs to be activated, something like that. Okay. And yeah, then okay, up yeah, to okay, you to okay, create okay, a workflow. Okay, yeah, okay, so okay, when the user yeah. and when the user is created, there is not a new event. When the user is created, you check the property. Oh, does the user need to be activated? Yes. Then I will send an email. So you don't even need a custom. Yes. Yes. And, it, and you can do what. And now the second question I have is, how can we extend today a user like this? So if I look at username email, is it a part? Is roles another part? I don't think so. Maybe, I think it is. I think it is. It's just not a content type, but they are based on, sorry, they are based on custom drivers. So there must be a custom user driver or I user driver and then you can create a custom I user driver that will add a checkbox. So what I will do, if you want that, I will create a module or a feature in the existing module um, mm -hmm. that will be called user activation, fine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, and just with a driver that will add this property, but change it. So you have it today and you must have done that, but just call it like needs activation and you don't need new events. Or, or maybe we need to make it more extensible so we can add anything we want. People have asked for that. We need to think about it. But at least if it was just an activation driver, it would work today. Need activation. And then it's up to anyone to write the workflows and everything. Mm. You, don't need a okay. you don't need a custom page or whatever and because you can reuse the reset password. Because okay. If it needs activation, and the user account has been resetted, then you can say, okay, I enable you, you have, that's what I wanted. I don't think you need custom events. I did make it a security setting. But you don't want. I don't see what, why it matters here. It's just a question of workflows and be able to trigger mm -hmm. the correct workflow when, when you want. So this new property will make sense. As, as long as we don't have any way to extend the user today dynamically, you need a feature and a driver. And I think that's all you need. And the property to say user needs activation. And then it's, up, okay, you have a, this property available in the user. And I then don't know where I put it. Mm. Yeah. Oh, I'm telling you, it must be uh, the way I'm telling you, the, you must have done a driver for the i user that's the only way Somewhere. to plug here and then it's in the properties of a user which is an entity and then from the the workflow yeah, I, I put it in the because see here it, it's all static interesting it's not extendable well that you think <laughs> that i think <laughs> so i yeah so I just I'm, followed like this pattern. I I see, but I think you can extend it with custom drivers. Yeah, it's it's field, so it must be. So let's see. Yeah, I probably that. So you, this is the way we we customize the users. Uh, you see orchard called entities at the top. This is because the user is an entity, meaning mm -hmm. it supports custom drivers. So, um, okay. so that will be, I think, better because you don't need okay. to write to many things and we don't have many things to to maintain that are completely isolated, though they are the same thing. And, and you know, Skype me and we can do, the, do it together. Yeah. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
So I have to support it with custom driver. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. It should be okay. one custom driver with a um, a property that is that doesn't say it will send an email because we might want to do something else, and then yeah. we could we could see what events we can reuse, and if we need to do new ones, but I don't think we need new ones, and we could support that scenario. And ideally, we should not even have to create a driver. We should be able to add fields to a user like we do for a content type. That would be even better because then people will add three different checkboxes or whatever they want and then yeah. use it in workflows like they want. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, OK. Yeah, please can you something on Skype with me if you want to finish it. Yeah. And we can look also at is the reset password page not sufficient or is it sufficient? Or maybe we need an event on the reset, like yeah, because password, there's no, there's no reset event in. I could hook into, and it, then, and, it, and, it, and it then would send like an email saying, "Hey, you forgot your password. Click no, no, here no. and it lost link." But no, because the workflow is it will be different. Go down on the post here, uh, just below, and is there an event? Send email listing. Yeah. Uh, uh, maybe there is no event here, and that's also something is, is oh, missing. Is and, uh, event, I think. Uh, okay, yeah. Recovery for, okay. See, you, you have an event that, so in a workflow, you intercept this event and you check that the user has the um, email activation, well, activation enabled. And then you're like, okay, the user has activation enabled and reset his password. So you remove the flag and you enable the user and you acknowledge the new password and done. Yeah, but uh, okay, but this I think generates a reset password token URL. That's okay because this is what you will send to the user on the first event. <clears throat> I have to look into it, but I don't know. I, I investigated this route and I came into a dead end, so I extended the. But now I'm here to help. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I extended the <laughs> registration controller with activate account. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think yeah, as long as as long as we can prevent to extend existing things, to redo the things that we already support, we should not do that because that's that means more more scenarios to support. Mm. And uh, yeah, so we'll see. Okay, so we'll try again, and then you can change my mind. That's fine. <laughs> Let's see. But of course. nonetheless, I like the way you extend things and uh, to to solve your solutions, to solve your issues. Mm. Because you have this issue today, you mentioned that. And also another thing I, I hear is that we need a way to be able to script these kind of things. Like you say you have 100 users, then I'm like, I will not even go in the UI. I, I need a recipe with all the users that will create them with the, yeah. flag, the flag you want. So that uh, sc scripting for us is like the project I'm working on now. So um, what we have while this is loading is we have like a Kubernetes cluster running all kinds of, of now we have now one service, but there are more coming. And we use Kevin's uh, OpenID module to be the OpenID server. And then we have another Orchard Core installation that of uh, Orchard Core service that uh, runs a portal where users can do their work. And we work on invitation basis. So we're really starting to uh, 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 grow this platform. So right now we are just doing things manually and automating things as they become a burden. So. Of course, scripting is what we want, and of course, uh, we don't want to be stuck entering users. But right now, this is where we are. Well, I think a recipe today will do that. Recipe for for then you can yeah execute a recipe for adding users. Yeah, we have. I think we have a create user step, don't we? I think so. Yeah. So you can have a recipe with all the users you want to create. And I think we have a page to run a custom recipe. Uh, maybe not to push it. Yes, we. Uh, I don't know if we can edit a recipe. I don't, I don't think we can execute recipes on. That's something we can, you can add. You can create a module that will, you can paste or upload the recipe file to run it. Ideally from a deployment plan perspective, like instead of Import, yes, I, I, that, that should be in a deployment plan, like execute a, 
an uploaded file as a deployment plan, something like that. Yeah, could be, could be, but I, I yeah, okay. Oh, failed. Why? Yeah, you might need to rebuild. Yeah. So in the meantime, while you build, I will go over the other topics. Yeah. Okay. So I'm sharing my screen, and then when you're done, I will go back to you. Um, so Terry is next week. Sorry. Um, new issues talked about it. One zero. Um, so if you want to ship one zero, people are asking. People are waiting for one zero. Reminder: we have issues labeled P zero, and that target. Oh, just two of them now. One zero. Let me grab my power cord. One second. Triage for one zero milestone, P0 import export module with iScope, that's an issue, but then we can go on P1, P2. So these issues should be fixed because if we triage them for P1, P2, P0, it means we can't ship one zero without fixing these issues. Uh, we can reconsider them based on priorities like this one, mobile friendliness, maybe it's just, I mean, it's never closed. So we could say, OK, the current status is fine. Um, this one may be already fixed by the, by the time it has been created. So we need to check everything and ensure we should punt them or punt them or fix them. Like this one should be fixed now. It was just about fixing, republishing your get packages. So that should be OK now. Um, yeah, I think this one might be fixed by the bug we we fixed last week, I mentioned. So yes, so we should just focus on this if we want to ship 1.0. Um, some of them have been fixed already this week. And the more we work on these ones, the quicker we can release 1.0. So up to whatever you can do to work on these instead of working on something else. Just question of whoever uh, priority is whatever priority is for whoever. Um, so that's about one zero. Mathis, does it work? I have one error left, but I think okay. it will, it, it's still building, so. Speak then. Uh, mm -hmm. I have a next topic. That's okay. Okay, you do it. Drive, driver configuration. So Dean has been working on a PR to improve um, how you set up the um, the content types, fields, and parts drivers, um, and also, by the way, handling the case of custom um, display modes and editor modes, or display and edits. Um, and Dean here. So the idea is that um, there are two issues here. The first issue that Dean wanted to fix. That's not, that's not the one. Oh, that's another, oh, that's another one. recent. You have too many PRs. Uh, so the first issue that had to be fixed was um, the way we register drivers. We, we use the DI only, so we register an I content display driver add field display driver, and we just resolve them by the eye, which might not be optimal because we will invoke every single driver for every single field, and then there will be no up or not, but that, that's not optimal. So the suggestion was to use a content options object, this, or this kind of pattern, that will be in the DI because it's an option, but we would enrich this option with um, preferences, like the drivers we want for a field and 
and then we will just and also how to instantiate the content part if we use the content part factory and things like this. So it's kind of refactoring. Um, and then something happened is that um, Dean realized, um, <laughs> well, whenever we try to create custom, and I, so Antoine created a custom editor, Dean created a custom editor, I created some custom editors, and we found out that the main issue is when you want to replace, well, when you want to integrate with a driver, but as a custom editor, and you can't do that, or you need to do some checks of the editor name inside the main driver. And that is not sustainable because the driver, the main driver, needs to know about all the editor types. So you can't extend it. That's very bad. So by the way, Dean then decided to tackle this issue and to provide ways to um, configure. When you configure a driver and a field, or a field with its driver, you will also be able to reconfigure it for custom um, display modes. So if I look, for instance, for tags is not an, an example. What have you done? Have you updated existing ones? There's some examples on the on the bottom of the last comment. Okay. Um, because right now we don't have tags in there, so I haven't. Um... Right, so, yeah. so uh, this is the current the API uh, how it looks like. So add content field, the field you want to add, and then with this driver. Okay, this is the default and how we will do um, usually. Then this one, add content field, taxonomy field, and then for display mode, the display mode, where is the display mode then? Oh, this is lambda. Is there a display mode? Yes, then you register this field. No, then you don't register this field, okay? And you can add another driver for a specific display mode. In this case, would it replace the one or would it just add it? So that will just force the um, taxonomy field driver to only run if it's in standard mode. Okay, so this is how it says standard because in the standard mode, the display mode is empty. Okay. Um, and then in non-standard mode, it will use this display driver. So this way we can replace driver only for a specific um, display mode. And that's what also was blocking us before. And same thing for the editor. So some, something I some, some, something I realize is that we have display mode and we have editor, not editor mode. Maybe that's something we want to fix. I don't know. At the same time, a driver contains edit and display, so it's just about front end and back end for it. So it's kind of kind of think about it. Um, content field, content field use display driver. So what's the difference here? It's global and we can pass a lambda third party module. So what's the difference between the four so display modes here? That one you can do the display mode and the editor in one hit because so okay. you can yeah. the driver operation. Okay, that's better. Totally remove the default driver, so you can also remove a driver and then replace it by something else. Before it was in the DI, you had to remove something. Now it's just an option, but the same result. Um, yeah, and that's, that's how it looks like now. So when you want to create fields, you don't just add it to the DI. It will do it for you, but it's also configuring whatever drivers and how to use whichever driver. And because it's a lambda, it can also be dynamic. You can dynamically decide to use or not a driver based on whatever context you, you are in, like uh, a request. Maybe that's something we should add in the lambda, the current request, if it's available. Uh, I'm not sure. I think it should be available because in the coordinator, we have the request, but something else to, to look into. It can be added also later with a different lambda. Um, yeah, so that's, that's the idea. Um, and that will solve some issues we have in terms of extensibility for drivers. Thank you, Dean. One among all the PRs of Dean that are still to be merged, like this one. Um, maybe this one after this one, <laughs> because it needs that. Yeah, tags is pretty blocked by, by that one, really. Yeah. So, um, we're, get, we're getting close. 
Agreed. With that, I think. Matthias. Yes, I, I have it working, yeah. Thank so, you. okay, yes, of course. So, last time we talked about course, you uh, commented on my UI skills. <laughs> um, I had a UI with all the uh, tabs and you didn't like it. So, what I did, I changed it. Right I'm, now, so mean. So, yeah, I'm so mean. Yeah, and Dean really knows mean. about it also. I'm super picky yeah. about <laughs> Yeah, about UI. So, what I did is I made like these areas and made one list. So now when you enter your course policy, you can just type them. And then you can click OK. And then you have to click Save. Instead of it two clicks, being two, two clicks, but I had the, one click. I don't and get then, it. Why two clicks? What with OK and save? <laughs> What's the difference? I don't get it. Why do you have to say OK and save? We do it again. You edit uh, the policy and then you save the entire configuration. Oh, because it's many policies. Okay. Yeah, you can have multiple. So but you can. Why? You, you don't. Sure. You don't you don't want your site to restart each time you add a policy. Because save restarts, I see. But then does it mean that nothing is saved until you click save? Yes. That's weird. How do you, where do you store it? Local storage? Uh, JavaScript. Local storage. Yeah. Well, I mean, JavaScript is not the answer to my question. It's either cookies, it's, local storage, it's database. No, somewhere here in HTML, I okay, have this hidden, hidden thing. Sure, you will, you will remove that very soon. I'm telling you, that's super bad. That's something called local storage that is ten times better and much nicer. So that's very. You bad. mean in, in the browser, in the background, local that, storage? That's okay. called local storage in JavaScript, and we do that for the preview. Google local storage, and you will understand what I'm saying. And it will be okay. simpler. Okay. And better. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. I also added support for um, set policy as default policy because I just in the um, you have to have a default policy, and I just said okay, pick the first one, and then there was a comment on the PR and said no, bad, make it make it uh, make it better. So I did. Um, so all these core policies, they will use then the ASP.NET middleware, the course mm -hmm. middleware. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's reflecting everything into the middleware configuration, right? Yes. There is no yes. other code that you may just ASP.NET course middleware. Yes. Okay. I can sh I, this is not my normal build machine, but okay. Um, then I have a hard question. Why would someone need to do it from the UI instead of the code? Uh, we do it because we have different configurations for uh, production, acceptance, development, and we don't want to mess around with different yeah, that, codes for different honestly, environments. Honestly, that would be a counter argument. That would be a counter argument for me. I will give you an, some other example, and, and it's a question I have every time we have configuration. Okay, mm -hmm. there are many ways we could do configuration. There is in the app settings files, the JSON documents we have. Mm -hmm. There is in the code directly because maybe you want to hard code the logic into some module or into your web application. You can do that, mm -hmm. and there is in the UI. And it's always a, a struggle to know where it's the good, where is the correct location, if not every location, if if we can. Yeah. And, yeah. and and I don't know, Dino might also take part of the answer because of the discussion because he also had the same questions for, for instance, Azure storage. Where do you put it? Is it in the UI? Is it in the config files? Uh, <laughs> is it in the code? And same thing for uh, media what? path location. So we always we, struggle uh, to know where it's better. I have another one where okay. we store it in the recipe. We also store it in the yeah, recipe. Yeah, so if it's, if you want to be able to change it by recipe, yes, it's better to have it as a, as a, but still you might not need, 
yeah and then to change it it's, it's you have you need ui um, for your argument about development and release i would say it's much easier to have it in an apps app settings file for release and app settings file for development than to have it in the database which could yeah, okay, but, be pushed but, from one yeah. yeah but then you have a, a user saying hey uh, I, I need this course policy to be active. Okay, let me just deploy my application again. I agree, but... <laughs> I, 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 and, 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 and the alternative is, okay, let me edit that for you and update my deployment. So if... But it was a feature request from, I think, long ago that uh, we needed uh, reverse proxy and course configuration. And we needed it also for our for our Kubernetes cluster. So, and does it mean that we could not also have it from the settings files? That might be also interesting because I will I will imagine that some people don't deploy their site if the cause is not defined, and don't wait to deploy their site and then configure it dynamically just to enable the cause features. I might also see that more often than just going in the admin and define the cause settings because it's even worse that the cause settings might break your site maybe the way you want to edit the core settings so by i don't know i don't know how course works magically with all these settings but is it possible that by changing some things in the core settings i can't access my site anymore no they fixed that it was possible that uh when you said allow any origin and allow credentials then you would be able to break it. Okay. But otherwise, this is just telling your browser, hey, it's okay if you do some cross-site scripting to me. Okay. So could you break your site? Yeah, if you had like spa uh, single page applications doing weird or, or doing, doing things that you need to uh, take the write a course policy. That's how you could break it. Then the spa would break, but. Okay. But it's quite useful having it as UI. I'll just jump in there for a sec rather than rather than app settings. Because you yeah. can mess around with course policies sometimes. So you, you like the UI because you want to be able to test things easily. Yeah. I don't want to deploy the site. I, I, I kind of, I'm with Nessieth on that one. So you need to change to local storage then. <laughs> oh, that's easy. <laughs> that's okay. Thing. And for the UI, I will let Jasmine review it because I won't say anything else. But Jasmine will. Yeah, first I had like, uh, when you clicked edit, then it would open the, the, the detail screen here. Yeah. And you went totally bananas, so. That's probably how I do, yeah. If I touch it, I'm going to break it. <laughs> yeah. Make the PR adjustment, we'll break it. Okay, so um, that that was my demo. So would you like, would you guys like to see what we created with, uh, with the Orchard Core framework? Next week. Next week? That's yeah. fine. That's because fine. We, we, need, we need some content for next week. <laughs> and we are already over the time, so we okay. will, at least I know that there will be some things to talk about next week. Okay. But yeah, okay, we want to know. We love it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good job, Mathis. Thank you. Okay. I'll 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 talk to you about uh, improving the account activation. Yep. Then. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Good. So we still have some things for next week. We have still theories, but it will be first before Mathis next week. And um, we talked about everything else here. So 128, we work, right? There is no thing that prevents us. Reese and uh, Mathis, something like this. Somewhere there is an I. Um, I stopped sharing, so you should probably. Oh, sorry. Share. Yeah, but sure. I'm just, take, about. just showing the notes uh, here, just for next week. What they do, yeah. Okay, all good. Any other question, comments? 
something I forgot to talk about, you want me to talk about, but it will be pretty important, so I don't end the meeting now. All good, um, lots of people today again. Thanks everyone. Remember to go on the Area 51 website for Stack Overflow if you haven't registered there. And otherwise, I think we're good. Thanks everyone. See you on Thursday. Hopefully to do some real triage and not like a design meeting, but it was would a great meeting. Hmm? Yeah, but uh, would you like everybody to be present during the triage or just... Oh, I, honestly, I like nobody to be there. <laughs> <laughs> but it's always Dave, uh, Antoine, Jasmine, also Dean sometimes comes in. And but that's okay, the usual faces, because it's actually boring, because I'm just going over every issue that has been commented on or opened and trying to find, to define a milestone or to understand if it's an actual issue or, or just a question or just close it and that's it. And people just watch me going over issues and sometimes uh, we have discussions or I talk out loud, out loud and people listen to me. That's it. That's kind of boring. I, it would be boring if it was not me talking. So I don't know how Antoine, Jasmine, Dave cope with me every Thursday, but they do it. So that's it. Oh, okay, some people so also. I'll, I'll if you have issues and PRs, yeah. yeah. If you have PRs and issues you want to triage and you want feedback and you don't want to wait a week, then you just also come to the meeting and we try to prioritize your issues and talk about it. Okay, so so okay, so if I want stuff in, I have to bring them up each oh, Thursday. Okay. If you send stuff in, you have to bug us as much as you want, as much as you can, and then it will be merged or you'll get review. And that's how it works. <laughs> okay, okay. Make yourself louder and then we want to shut you up and then we'll have to talk and I think fix I think like my my colleagues, uh, no, <laughs> they, say, they say I'm loud enough, so. <laughs> okay. That's fine for us. We have seen louder than that. Okay. Um, thanks, everyone. See you okay. on Thursday or next Tuesday. Bye-bye. Okay, bye. Bye. bye.